Venezuelans start demanding the armed forces to bring back democracy by not recognizing Maduro as president. The armed forces are especially relevant now because the withdrawal of the military support to Maduro is decisive for a change of government. But this is not so simple for several reasons. Hugo Chavez, the founder of the Venezuelan Bolivarian Revolution, was an army officer. As acting president, Chavez had the Venezuelan military to occupy many of the cabinet positions. He also gave them control of institutions with access to huge sums of money. And this legacy lives on. According to Social Watch figures, a Venezuelan NGO, ministers with a uniform represent 25% of Maduro's government. Diosdado Cabello, commonly called the second most influential figure in Venezuela's regime, is also a military. Generals today have a stake in the control of borders, routes and ports, which puts them in a very privileged position because unlike ordinary people, they have access to US dollars. Aside from that, the army has also been accused of involvement in what the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. described as Maduro's violent narco state. You would think that countries that participate most in armed conflicts are the ones that have more generals, but this is not really the case in Venezuela. Chavez also did a deep purge within the armed forces to make sure senior members of the military were aligned with his leftist ideas. Venezuelan generals run the oil industry, manage food imports, and many other branches with high budgets. And if Maduro goes, their privileged economic position is put at risk. However, Venezuelan soldiers receive little more than the country's minimum wage, which is not even enough to buy the basic food basket because of the severe economic crisis. But should that fact create immediate political tension? No one knows so far. Maduro continues to ask loyalty from the military, but so does the opposition.